Hi, in uh, this video I'm going to have a look at a question I've asked in a number of guises and usually it comes down to something like my new Canon printer looks much worse than my old Epson one or sometimes my new Epson printer looks much worse than my old Canon one and this happens when people have perhaps changed printers and they think well does this mean that one printer make is better than another and they shouldn't have chosen the one they have? Which is presumably quite often why they ask the question. And it may well look different, but in general, any good quality modern printer is capable of producing very good prints. Now there are subtle differences between the ink sets, between the types of printers. So just a couple here, and these are more, more advanced ones. This is the Epson P700, uh, that's a Canon Pro 200, that's a dye based printer. This is a pigment ink printer. Um, that could be part of the change, but you know, really you need to decide whether what you're seeing as looking worse, so whether it's the Canon printer looks worse, the Epson printer looks worse, whether that is for real. And the best way I know of doing that, and I get a lot of printers to test, so I'm, I'm, this is a question I'm often looking at in different ways. And I have a test image. Now I've done loads of videos about this. I've mentioned this several times. It's downloadable from the Northlight Images website. And this is invariably the first colour image that I'll print on a new printer when I'm setting it up and I am happy that I've got everything set up properly. Because if this printer, if this image comes out wrong, then I'm fairly certain, because the image is okay, it's nothing to do with my editing of the images. And you have to accept that if you've been using a printer for years, you may have been editing your images to come out well on that printer, when what you're actually doing is editing your images to correct imperfections in that printer. You don't know. So that's always the point I suggest using a test image. You work on different paper. Here it is on a textured watercolour paper. This is a glossy paper. And it'll show the differences. The download for it lists all these little panels on it, what they're there for and what they show. So any good quality modern printer should be able to make usable prints of this. Um, the next bit comes down to paper types. Now, likewise, I always suggest if you're starting with a new Canon printer, start out with, you don't need necessarily many of them, but start out with some Canon paper to test that it's working okay. It will have been created with Canon paper. Similarly, if you've got a new Epson printer, start off with some Epson paper and see that that's printing okay. Because then you can rule out there being something wrong with the printer. And both Canon and Epson printers, I've known them have faults in new printers. It's not very common, but it does happen. So that's one of the reasons I always test. Now, I often get new printers sent to me just before they're released or have just been released. So I have a bit of latitude if I get a, a pre-release printer and there are some issues with it. Um, you know, Epson Canon will send out something else, come, somebody might come around and have a look at it or something like that. But that happens. But that's because I'm testing cutting edge stuff. Once a printer has been announced and has been in the market for six months, any initial quirks should have been ironed out. So if you're seeing issues with the printer, you have to look at what else it could be. Now, I mentioned using Canon paper or Epson paper, just because that should work. If that doesn't work and there's still something wrong, well, maybe there's something wrong somewhere else, particularly if the test image comes out wrong, um, because you're not, you're not having to do any editing or photography or anything that to create this test image. It's just there. It should work. It shouldn't be too dark. It shouldn't be too bright, too light. The colours should be OK. That is the, the, the acid test that I do right at the start of testing to see how good a printer is going to be. But I mentioned paper types. Different printers have different ink sets in them, even in Canon, there are different ink sets in different printers. Likewise for Epson, I looked recently at some of their EcoTank printers, how different ones have a different range of inks in it. And some inks don't work on some papers. 
Now, the worst bit here, I know a few people got caught out by this one a few years ago. They had loads of, um, it was either Kodak or HP paper, photo paper, and they might have you know, several boxes of it. And you'd try printing on it on a Canon printer or an Epson printer. And what would happen was you'd get a print that, well, if you got it that looked anywhere like this, you'd be lucky because the moment you touched it, the ink would run. The ink just never dried properly it's quite possible to get the wrong paper. Some papers don't work in some printers. It's less common these days. It's quite difficult to get those really uh, difficult to print on papers. Um, I've got a stock, a pack of some that I use every so often. I just put through a printer knowing full well that it's probably not going to work. Maybe one day it will work and that, that will surprise me and I'll know that something as significant has changed about the inks, but I don't expect it to work. That's the sort of look. The other thing is different papers have different surface looks on them. So if you've been printing um, on glossy paper, and your prints have a certain look to them. Well, that particular gloss paper may look different slightly in the way the light shines off it with a different printer. It shouldn't be bad, certainly if you use the uh, manufacturer's paper. So if I was testing a Canon printer, it doesn't have to be one of the more advanced ones here, it could be one of, the, um, one of the tank printers. And if I print on that and it doesn't come out right, and I'm just using any old paper. Well, I'm using any old. If I use a Canon paper, I expect it to come out okay. Likewise, on an Epson printer, I expect it to come out okay. But some printers, particularly at the cheaper end, may be slightly limited in some of the papers they can print. So, for example, the Epson EcoTank 2680 I looked at recently is a four color printer, a CMYK. So three colors and black. The black is a pigment black and the CMY, so the cyan, magenta, yellow inks are dye inks. Now those dye inks work fine on a glossy paper. The pigment black ink that's in that is more for documents and matte papers. You try printing all of those on it and it won't look right. And in fact, with just the CMY inks uh, for photo printing, it's quite tricky to get good looking photos out of it. Now, the other thing is you may have been printing with a printer for years and here's the bit that people don't necessarily want to do. Perhaps you wouldn't necessarily know what a really good print was if you saw it. Now, I can catch myself out on this as well. So it's always worth bearing in mind that the printer maybe may have moved ahead in its capabilities where perhaps your stuff hasn't. So the other bit to look at is the software you're using for printing. Um, I can't keep track of every single package. Certainly I use Macs. I don't use, haven't used uh, a Windows PC this century. I don't use it. So I haven't experience of printing on all kinds of software, particularly if you're talking about printing off tablets or um, iPads, um, phones. When you're printing there, I'm going to say all bets are off. Um, the apps will print, if you get the Epson app, the Canon app, you will potentially get reasonable looking pictures, but you're really starting from way behind the line if you're trying to get great looking prints from an iPad or a phone or, or whatever like that. Um, Macs, Windows PCs, proper software. The software I always suggest if you're using a computer is to start with the manufacturer's software. So for Canon, that's the PPL, professional print layout for software. For Canon, uh, for Epson, their version is Epson print layout, EPL. Both are downloadable. They will work with all the better printers. Um, they may have difficulties with some of the lower end printers. Um, and therein lies one of your issues. Uh, if you are forced to use the sort of low end basic software, well, you're using basic software. You may get better results trying something different. If you haven't tried the Canon or the Epson software that came with the printer, try that, see how that works. At higher end, there should be little difference, particularly if you use the Epson or the Canon software. If you're printing from something like Lightroom or Photoshop, then you might choose also to go via the Epson or Canon software. It just may be easier, and certainly for initial testing to make sure everything's okay. If you're printing out test images, there's another test image of a type I use, got some very strong colors in it. That shows up all kinds of issues as well. But if you're doing that, then 
you should be okay. Um, once again, if the printer doesn't work like that, look to see what the problem is. Remove as many variables as possible. This particular picture here, this is, this is one that I use for creating printer profiles. Now, ideally, you should print for the best photo printing results, you should print using profiles. If you get the Epson software uh, or the Canon software, you will find that you probably got for basic Epson and Canon papers, you will have some profiles there and they will work with it. Now, if you're using third party uh, papers, you either need to find someone who's made some profiles and quite a lot of my printer reviews do uh, include lots of profiles I've made which are available on request for, for non-commercial use. Um, but you'll have to email me for them, they're not posted online that you can just go and download them. I will make custom profiles as part of my testing and that's part of my deciding how well the printer works on different media comes back to that media choices. There is nothing wrong with third party papers and the like because after all Epson and Canon don't make their own paper. Other people make their paper for them and put it in Epson or Canon packets and boxes. That's, you know, that's the way that is. But in general third party papers can work great but you almost certainly will need profiles for them. If you've been using, talking of profiles, if you've been using, let's say, a quite a nice quality paper and you've had it on a Canon printer and you've got a profile that you've used for it, maybe from the paper suppliers, because some paper suppliers will produ produce profiles. And then you go to an Epson printer or from Epson to Canon, works either way. And you think, well, this is all right. I've got a profile for this paper. No, it isn't. You've got a profile for the paper and printer that you were using it with. Profiles are not transferable between the two. In a few printer models, you can transfer, uh, you can transfer profiles. So for example, this, the, uh, the Epson P700 printer, because internally it's the same, you can use profiles for this. You can use them on the Epson P900. You can't use them on any other printers at all. They simply won't work. Well, they'll work, but the results will quite likely look awful. They are tuned to particular things. So for the Canon Pro 200 here, I've got a set of profiles if I want to print on that. That's great. They will work for that. They're no good on any other printer whatsoever. So if you find that you've got, you can't find profiles, either check with the manufacturers, the paper manufacturers or some paper suppliers to see whether they will produce profiles. If they haven't got them, some, certainly here in the UK, some paper suppliers will, if you buy paper off them, you print a couple of sheets like this, one or more sheets like this, you send it off to them, they will scan it using the similar sort of software that I use for making profiles, and they'll send you a custom profile for it. And you have a custom profile for that paper on that printer. And that's how you sort it out for that. So there are lots of sources, reason, potential reasons for you know, why your old printer prints looked better. Almost always, unless you're doing something really wrong, it's not true. It is either the way you are printing your old prints and you've got used to them. You're printing something wrong about your new prints. Because, and this is the bit that I always point out to people, if you are producing prints on a modern, reasonably good quality printer with good quality paper, and they don't and they come out wrong it is almost always your fault in some way certainly as if i if i produce stuff that looks wrong it comes out i my first thought is not this paper's rubbish this printer's rubbish my first print is how have i messed this up in some way um, it's easily done particularly when you're getting used to a new printer which may be slightly different so uh, to say again i epson printers canon printers Good ones are all capable of producing better prints. Great looking prints even. You might then come back to the fact that actually are your photos really up to it? Are your photos good enough? Well, that's another matter altogether. But the question as to why your printer looks different to your old one and your old one looks better, there's quite a number of different things can apply to that. Um, 
you know, I will almost always put money on it that your new printer, if it's certainly if it's more than a few years, a uh, few years newer than the old one, is capable of fundamentally making better looking prints. Just you haven't found out how yet. Now, have a look at some of my other printing reviews and articles. Uh, all the printers I've looked at, I've got long written articles, which is where all the detail stuff goes. And I've got usually a selection of videos that go with it to show particular types of print. So this one here, this is an art paper. So to, you know, I'll, I'll have something showing how to make a particular type of print on a particular printer. And What's more, if you've got any questions, please let me know because it's people asking questions like this that give me ideas for these uh, the videos. Because I always assume that if one person asks me the question, at least a dozen more have thought of it and not thought of asking about it. So thanks for watching. Hope it's been useful. Please do subscribe to the channel if possible. It is appreciated. And um, thanks.